In this lesson, we'll learn how to utilize the custom palette to bring custom brushes into and out of Sketchbook Designer. All right, great. So again, I've got the same file we were working with in the previous lesson open here. And you can see here that uh, I've got our custom brushes down here in the custom palette. Now, if you don't have your custom palette open, you can open that simply by hitting Alt-Z on your keyboard, just like so. Or you can get to it right up here through the window drop down in the menu bar right here under custom palette. So uh, now the custom palette is composed of different sets. And these sets are the defaults that come with Sketchbook Designer. You can see here in the brushes set, we have a number of different brushes. Some of these are pencils, erasers, pens, and airbrushes. And then we have a number of custom brushes that have shipped. And we can utilize these, whether it be on a paint layer or a vector layer to create exactly the stroke we want. So uh, maybe we want to use this ink splat one. We can use that on our paint layer and create pixels with that. Or we can come down here and bring in our vector layer and we can paint that same exact brush on a curve. So um, again, these are all custom brushes that ship with Sketchbook Designer. Let's come in here and take a look at some of these other other sets that ship. So you can again see we have gradient ramps here. We have linear and radial gradients. Uh, then we have four different sets here that include texture fills, building materials, wood tiles, fabric, and nature. We're going to learn about fills here in just a little bit. Uh, this last set here is for colors. So um, you can see there are a number of different swatches here uh, of custom colors that have been saved into this color set. Now, when it comes down to it, we're not required to keep brushes just in our brushes set. We could actually move these to any set we want to, just simply by clicking and dragging and dropping those on the tab there. And you can see that custom brush is now in the ramps set. So uh, let's go ahead and drag that back over to brushes just so we can keep all those in one place. Now, uh, these particular sets are, again, the, the defaults that ship with Sketchbook Designer. So maybe you want to isolate your assets into maybe your own custom set. Maybe it's colors, maybe it's fills, maybe it's uh, brushes. Uh, let's come over here to this little menu in the top right-hand corner of our custom palette. We'll go ahead and click on that, and I'm going to say New Set right here. And you'll see here that we have created a custom set that's called Assets 1. Now, we don't have to name that Assets 1. We can name this anything we want to. Let's just double click on the tab, and you can see this little dialog pops up that says Rename Set. So I'm just going to call this something like My Assets, and we'll hit OK. And you can see there is our custom set. So let's come over here to our Brushes set, and we'll just drag our custom brushes over here. There we go. I've drugged those three brushes. All right, great. Now. Let's say, uh, if we look here, you can see there's actually two with this particular graphic here that have been created. Now, I created this one here so I could come in here and hold down the Shift key, and I could do straight lines, like so, and I could line up kind of a nice even pattern. Or I can come in and I can draw a curve line, and that's going to align itself to my stroke. There we go. Sort of like that. Now, maybe because I've created this one, I don't want this particular brush anymore. We want to delete that. Well, let's come over here and just simply click on this red X right here. And that's going to prompt Sketchbook Designer to give us a warning saying we're about to permanently delete a preset or this particular asset. So uh, we can go ahead and click OK there. And you can see that our custom brush gets deleted. Now, if we came in and made some additional uh, brushes here, we could also add those here using this little plus to the uh, left-hand side of the palette. So let's just do that. We'll just come in here to our attribute editor. Let's capture a new brush here. And I'm going to come in and capture, let's capture this one here. There we go. We'll align that to our stroke. Adjust the minimum and maximum radius just a bit here. So now we've got kind of this, uh, this tiled look. So uh, let's come over here and just add that. We'll just go ahead and click that plus sign, and you can see we've added yet another custom brush here. So uh, now these custom brushes also have names. So if we come over here and maybe select these leaves, let's come back over here to the menu for the custom palette. And I'm just going to come down here and select Rename Selected Item. You can also see that we can delete a selected item right here from this menu as well. So uh, let's go ahead and rename that. You can see here, here's a name for that particular asset. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, let's go ahead and say Leaves. 
and there we go. You can see here, uh, now when we mouse over that, we get a little tooltip that says that this is our leaves brush. So um, we've actually created just custom brushes inside this My Assets set. But again, we can store other types of assets in here. Say, for example, we wanted to store a color. Let's just go ahead and pick a color here. Maybe we choose kind of an autumn red, co reddish orange color here something like that and we want to store that as a custom color inside our my assets set well in order to store a color you simply click on this little button right here it looks like a color wheel with a plus next to it so uh, if we click on that you can see here that we've stored our color swatch right down here and we can come in and select that if we need to now if we make changes to that with it, that current color selected let's say we make that more of a blue color you'll notice that this little refresh button comes up on the color swatch. If we go ahead and click that, you'll see that it updates our color inside our custom set to the new color that we had selected. So um, that's how you can come in and begin to update some of these assets you save inside your custom palette here. All right, great. So uh, the last thing I want to show you uh, when it comes to this custom palette is how we can export our custom sets out of Sketchbook Designer, and then we can also import in custom sets if we have additional ones that we've created. So um, now, again, I've got my My Assets custom set created here. Let's go ahead and target that one to export. So I'll just choose the Export Sets option from the custom palettes menu and you'll see that we get this dialog that prompts us to select exactly which custom sets we want to export so we can select one of these we can select multiple sets uh, maybe we have multiple different sets created so um, we can save all those here we'll just say my assets and I'm gonna click OK now this is gonna bring me uh, up this dialog here so we can save this I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my referenced files folder and we'll just call this something like my assets and I'll go ahead and hit save and you can see it was just that simple to export out our custom set. Now again, importing it in is going to be a kind of the same process, uh, only we'll come over here and select the import sets option. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you want to experiment with that, feel free to select that option and browse to your project files. I'll go ahead and leave this custom set inside your referenced files folder. All right, great. So in this lesson, we've learned how to work with the custom palette inside of Sketchbook Designer to save and export our custom assets into and out of the application. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and move on to the next lesson. In the next lesson, we'll learn about making pixel selections here in Sketchbook Designer.